Hello guys, thank you very much for the comments from the previous tutorial and I would like to welcome everyone to this one. And today I am going to talk about functions in programming with C. So the scope of the day will be talking about so usually today we'll be talking about the definition, we'll be talking about new terminologies, not like these terminologies, and also we'll be talking about what are the benefits of using a function, and also we'll be talking about function calling, and we'll be talking about what we call function behavior which can be a recursive function and what we call iterative iterative function so today we are going to talk about this but then we can start by what is a function usually a function when you say a function a function is First, first of all, is a named. Named means what? Named means that each and every function should have a specific name. And when we are going to talk about naming, the same criteria of naming a variable, naming a variable, then will be also applied to naming a function. Okay, let me just um, let us just have like some key. It's like a review or a recap of what we have seen. So we have said that a variable, in order to name a variable, it should not have spaces between. You cannot say, for example, say int my age. This cannot work. So because it is not possible to have an empty or a blank space between. Uh, the two names of your variable so it means then here you need to put like an underscore or if you just make it as a simple name secondly you cannot start with for example my age you can start with an with a special character like um, this number or something else and also we have seen that also it should be meaningful it should be meaningful like if you are going to create for example age it is not good to say x because if someone else is coming to your codes then your function or your variable should be meaningful so that anybody who become any other programmer can come in your system then will be able to use your system in a very friendly manner so okay the first one we have seen that it is unnamed secondly we can see that it is an independent set of codes it is independent why it means something that has there it will be having a unique name and also the name uh, that name in other parts of the program you can execute the statement contained in the function usually this is what we call calling a function but also let me say for example we want to have a simple function for example uh, let me say for example let us just have a simple program let's say int add this is a simple function so here i'm having for example int a and int b and here we are only going to say okay return a plus b so if i'm having another function let me say for example int subtract then here the same as i was having there Then here I say you can return a minus b. So it is independent y. So it is dependent because like here you can see that I am having the same variables int a, int b, int a, int b. But this one, these are what we call local variables because this is an independent set of code and this is an independent set of code. But if you had like this de definition twice in one program you, without using functions, it will tell you that there is a conflict in declaration because we are declaring something that is already known in the system so it is independent from here so it means then it is having independent set of codes
Then, through three, we can also just say that a function should perform a specific task. It is also reusable. Reusable calls to perform a, set, a specific task. Reusable means, it means that you can call it any time without rewriting the calls. And also, it should perform a specific task. So it means then, as long as we'll be having your function, it will be there and it can help you to perform any specific task. So then from here, then we can say, okay, then if it is that, so then what are the benefits? I'm only going to talk about the benefits. Uh, benefits, I will only just speak and you will understand. So the first thing is this one. So why, why functions has came in? Why? What is the reason why people was inclined to use functions? So let me just give you a simple illustration. So assume that we want then student registration system. It is this one, student registration system then in this student registration system there's something that we will get to understand that will be there for example a student will need for example okay i want first of all to register myself after registering then i will be able to view the programmed courses then here i can be able to uh choose choose courses and here I can be able for example to add more courses and I can also be able to modify my courses apart from this I can do too many things and including including also let me say for example print transcript and even print bulletin So this is an example of something that the student will need to have access on student registration system. But then we can even just do this when we are only having one program. In my main, I will say, okay, for example, let me write the codes for register, the codes for view this, the codes for this, the codes for this, the codes for this, the codes for this, and the codes for this. Ah. Then it will take many, many lines of codes. So then here, it, if you write all of this in simple pro program, then it will be very difficult, difficult to debug. It is very difficult to debug. Why? Because if you are having any simple error in the codes of courses, add more courses, then you will need to check from the first line to the last line. So then functions can have came in so that then we can break this very big problem into some smaller, smaller problems. And those problems will be given solutions, which are functions. And we will be having a function only for register and a function for view programmed courses, a function for choose course, a function for doing this. So if then we are having as a problem or a bug in add more courses, we will not need to go to choose courses function. We'll only go here. So the first benefit then, it is what we mean by it break a large computing program into smaller ones. Secondly, it avoids redundant programming. Writing the codes here, same as here, same as there. No, I will only write once and then call anywhere. Thirdly, we can say that it increases the logic of clarity of the program. Your codes will be very clear, 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 and clear. And also here, it will also help the user to build a customized library or frequently use the routines or routines usually. We have said that then like when we are going to write printf, we have said that then we are not the one to write like this function. And this function will be seen in a particular library. And who puts those tasks or those functions in the library? Programmers. 
and also it promotes portability portability means it is very portable to move from one place to another usually these are the benefits then we can also go to terminologies when we talk about terminologies terminologies in terminologies we will be talking about firstly what we call function prototype secondly we'll be talking about function definition thirdly we'll be talking about something like function header and also we'll be talking about function body and uh, it is good to talk about also arguments and also return statement so usually let me just start with function prototype so usually a function prototype when you talk about prototyping so it is like an example of something when we are going to do an, an application for the customer usually the customer will be telling us okay i want this application and this and you, you need to go and sit down and do the prototype usually the prototype it will be like a blueprint of how the system will be looking like but it is not a system by itself then when what, what we talk about what do we mean by function prototype let me say that for example we want to write any simple and very simple simple function assume that i'm going to write a simple function and my simple function is a function for the hello world so let me just come here and uh, i'm going to add a new so let me say okay my thing is going to be called simple function and then my simple function then i'm going to include something which is a preprocessor we have said that each and every c program should have at least those parts the first one we have said that is the preprocessor and this preprocessor means standard input and output it is where we are able to find it is where we are able to find our our input and output functions like printf or scanf so here then i'm going to have my function let me only just call it void print hello world so when this is okay this, my function will be having void as a return type and also no argument which means void as the argument so here then i will say okay plaintiff hello world so i'm having this is my function then from here i need only to return what let me return like two because it is uh, it is integer as the return type then here i'm only going to call this function so if um to call this function i will only write the function name then i call it but like this here as you can see here then my function i'm calling the function before its definition so it means the system doesn't know this function so some compilers will allow you to do so but the real practice is that first of all you need to call it to prototype your function so pro, uh, function prototype will be having your function name together with all the arguments it will not be ended by this opening and closing blast but it will be ended by a semicolon then if then it is i will be needing this before this i'll be needing this function before uh before its definition so let us run so as we run then here there's a problem that the definition has no type storage class embedded so usually this is what we mean by that then uh, as you can see here let us just run then we see 
So, wow, there is an error. So it is telling us conflicting type for plenty of words. So it was there. So here I have declared it. Usually the function prototype should be having the function name together with the return type. So what is the return type of my print hello? Print hello word? It is void. So then here I need to come, then I put void. So then if I run again, wow, my hello word is coming. So then what have I done here? I have defined my function and my function has been called into main. So we are having what we call the calling function and the called function. So then what would we mean by prototype? It is this function name together with the return type and also the arguments if any but here i don't have any argument of my function so then this is what we mean by function prototype then we can go to function definition usually the function name or the function itself it is what we mean by function definition it will be getting uh, the cause to be executed this is what we mean by function definition so we can also just go to function headers what do you mean by function headers usually the function header is the start of the function and it will be giving you the function name usually the header will be uh, giving you the functions return type and describe its argument not that the function header is identical to function prototype but usually what only that is not there it is minus the semicolon so when we say function header it is this one but function prototype it is like this one plus semicolon so it means then if you want to prototype a function you'll be taking the function header then you add a semicolon are you getting my point yes function body it is this number of statements the list of statements to be executed then here are the arguments, those are the arguments. Let me say, for example, that here we want to add int add two numbers. This is my function. Then in my function, I'm going to have, for example, the two arguments. Let me say, for example, int a and int b. So these are what we call parameters. And these parameters of ours then we are having what you call uh, okay let me just do it okay let me say for example return then it is going to return a plus b so in my main i'm just saying okay int x which is equal to this number and also y which is equal to this number then after this i am going to call also my function which is add two numbers then in my add two numbers I am going to play to, to, to pass X and Y. So here, as you can see, this is what we call former parameters. This is what we call actual parameters. Former parameters, those are the parameters at the definition time. And actual parameters, those are the parameters at calling time. So if I run, if I run like this program, then you will see that wow it is only hello word it is not giving me the uh the addition of this 34 with 65 what is the problem okay as we remember we have said that we have three standards in c standard input standard output and standard error so there's no output there's no standard output for this add two numbers so then here i can say okay let me just enclose this in this parameter in this parenthesis then i add plaintiff let me add a plaintiff and in my plaintiff it is made it will be made of string literal plus the number of arguments to be passed the number of argument is my calling of my function the calling of my function so then let me say okay the sum is then i put two group okay t very good so like this, okay, I need to put a new line so that it will be very well formatted. So the sum is this one. Let me run again. So if you are going to run, wow, the sum is 99. So you can see that. This is what I meant by uh, uh, parameters or arguments. Here I had two parameters, A and B. And when I'm going to call, I call X and Y. 
then how? How the system knows it? Usually, when you are calling a function, the function only will check is this former parameters data type the same as the actual parameters data type? If yes, it will not make it will not make more focus on the naming of your parameters, but it will make it will take focus on the parameters data types. So then here you should have something to return. If it is an integer, you return integer. If it is long, you return long. If it is it's double, you return a double. So then here we have said that, okay, we are going to talk about the other things. So here on terminologies, this is something that we can even just have here. So then we can also just have something which, which many people call the library. So when we talk library, what do we mean by library? But here you remember that we have said that a function is the solution of modularization or what we call divide and conquer methodology. It is taking a very big problem. You divide it into specific and small problems is to be solved. Then you use functions for each and every task. Are we together? Yes. Then we can also just say, okay, what do you mean by then functions? and library, MATLABA functions, things like that. So when we, take, when we talk about library, we understand something like set of related functions. Wow. So let me say, for example, oh, I want, for example, to use this function, which is SQL, T. For example, I want this, the square root of 200. Usually, this is a function because it's a function which is only having one argument and I'm passing a number to this function. So we can write codes to do this. Let me say, for example, oh, let me say, for example, wow, let me say, for example, okay, um, it is, for example, int, okay, let me even just call it, hmm, let me call it float, um, find, square root and here i will be passing a float integer or a float which is for example a number then here i will say oh let me return something like this so let me return uh, the square root of my number and then i run so if you run easily we will see that, okay, there's nothing that is in there, but this square root usually, if we remember, if we remove all the other problematics, let me say, okay, okay, let me even <coughs> make this as <coughs> comments. So usually, even if it is not giving us an error, but there is, there is a warning, built-in function SQL root, it is enabled by default, default, but it doesn't find it. So there's a problem in find square root. So usually, to be given is an error that will not be easy to be seen. But then, like here, if I just come, for example, and then I say, okay, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to call my function. Then in my function, I'm going to pass x in it. So if you run, we see, wow, well, there's a problem. There's an error now because I'm calling the function. So conflicting type for find square root. At least the declaration of find square root was there. I was just calling this function. Then here we need, okay, find square root is there. So then here we need to see, okay, let me just take this. I'm going to take the function header in order to convert it into my function and my function prototype. The same error is still there. But okay, the sum okay sure, sure it is not there. I'm sorry, just oh, wow, we prototyped. But the problem is it is not giving us this. Let me just put something like a printf so that we can see whether the printf is showing us it is giving us something. Then only just close like this. And then 
to see whether it works. The square root of percentage D, which is X, is, so here I need to put again X. So because here we are having two data type specifier, I need also two arguments. Let us run. Usually it is telling me the square root of 34 is zero. Is that true? Oh, no, no. For example, let me then just create a float. If it was a problem to see, let me create a float to num, which is equal, for example, to that this. Then other than this, then I pass num. The last some people are saying, oh, it is because it was x and x was integer. Then again, a, the square root is this one. No, it is only giving me the address. It is only giving me the address. Then what do I have to do here? I only need to come here then, okay, there was a program. I need to include its library. Then the library for mathematical uh, functions it is math.h. Then after this, it is telling me the same. What is the program? What is the program? So let's just write it back. We see square root of now. This is what I'm going to return. Ah, the problem, the same problem. Okay, let us just see where is the problem. Just because here I'm only just saying okay. Okay, usually here I need to come here. Okay, it's this one. So here I need to put F and also again here. If the data type specifies for these things, it was incorrect. Now it's okay. But then here we go. Oh, how many? Many digits. Many digits after the comma. So we can say, okay, I only want two digits after the comma. So you can say, okay. So the, for this, we can say, okay, let me just be specific on two. And here also want to be specific on two after the comma. Wow, let me just see now. Okay, we are having two numbers after the comma. So the square root of three, six, three, four, five, it is 18 point this. Okay, this is what we mean by libraries or even headers, function headers. So usually those library will be coming in this preprocessor to tell to the system that anything that will be seeing a function which is not user defined, you'll be finding it in these predefined libraries or preprocessors. This is what we mean by preprocessor. So here, then here we'll be having many things. So we can have like an example. For example, we let us just have some examples of some libraries. For example, what is found in math.h. So we can have like sign, which will be for one uh, value. So let me even just check in my code, in my notes, so that we don't even just uh, take much time. We don't want to take much time in these things, so let's only open the file. So we'll be having what we call, yes, we can see that, here. for example, in math.h, we can be able to find sine, cosine, tan, a tan, a tan to logarithm, square root, power, and so on and so forth. In studio, we'll be having those printf, printf, scanf, scanf, and so many others. In string.h, we can have string copy, string concat, string cut, 
string compare, string length, concatenate to compare, to search for the length, to copy strings. So we can have too many other things. So here then, you know, function definition is what we are going to see. So this is what we mean by libraries. Then here you can see, okay, now we have seen how we can define our function. Then let me say, for example, we want them to define a simple function. And my simple function will be, for example, to, let me say, for example, uh, let me call my function um, find max from 3. Not 3, but 3. We are going to have our preprocessor, then we need to include, sorry, we need to include something like studio. Then E, after here, we'll be having our main function. And after our main function, because it is integer, we should return something which is an integer. And here, we can have something which is int maximum. Let me call it the same, find maximum from three. So if you understand, we will need three parameters. And those three parameters, then we will need to, to search for which is the big, well, what is the biggest number, what is the smallest number. For example, can anybody just say, okay, I want also the biggest number and the smallest number. Let me say, for example, int x, int y, and int z. So then what should be there though? So here then we can say, okay, let me have my max. Let me call, for example, my max, maxim, and it's going to be equal to x. I'm going to assign it to the first element, first value. Then I will say, okay, if then, if, if y is greater than my max, what should be there? Usually, I can say, okay, if y is greater than my max, I can okay say, okay, max, please. You know, you are not the one, the x that you had is not the biggest. Please take y, because y, it is the one that is big. Then I come here again, okay, if then, z is greater than Maxine. Okay, we tell okay, Max, you know, something wrong there. Please come and text and take Z because Z is the maximum. Then here, after all, I will say okay, man, return what is big. Just because Maxim are the one who is having the biggest element. So then, this is my program. Then here I can say, okay, int a, b, and c. So we say, for example, a is equal to 78, b is equal to 66, then this one is equal to 34, or even just one like this. Then I'm going to call my function. Then if I call my function, I will be passing the three parameters in there which are A, B, and C. But remember, here I can say, okay, let me create an integer which is int result. And my result will be having this one. Then I will print out, I will print if my result. So I can say, okay, this is the, 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 the biggest, the maximum, is percentage t then i return what i read i just print out the result okay let's run so you can see that here this include studio without h to tell us that is a library the biggest number is this one. Very good. So the system itself, it has gone 
and it has searched for the biggest from A, B, C, then the, what was the biggest has been assigned to result. And then as long as result is now having something, then it is the one that we are printing out. <clears throat> so then this is the simple, simplest program that we can do. Then here we can also just talk about something, prototyping, we've talked about them, and also the coring. So let us go to something which is calling. Let me just create any simple, a simple application, simple program, sorry. And this simple program of mine, I'm going to show you how is how it is different to call a function by value and to call by reference. Let me say, for example, okay, here we are having our main function. And here, let me so say that, for example, okay, test variable value. This is my the name of my function. And here I'm saying, okay, we are having int x and int y. Then inside my function, I'm returning some nothing. Inside here, I'm saying, okay, x is equal to 34 and y is equal to 10. And let me just say, for example, here, let me make it void so that I will not return. And in my main program, let me format. In my main program, what am I going to have? Let me say, for example, okay, we are having int the same, int x and int y. So in there, so we are saying, okay, x is equal to 10. And y is equal to 20. Then here I'm going to say, okay, the value of x is 10. and y is then here I'm going to pass x inverse y. So what do you think is the output of this program? What do you think is the output of this program? So usually here we are having what we call former parameters and actual parameters. Usually this x and y is very very different to this x and y. So if we run, usually we'll be seeing that our program x will be equal to 10 and y is will be equal to 20. Let us see this. Wow, 10 and 20. So it means then, even if we come and put here 1,000 or even 10,000, but the, the solutions should will be the same. It is 20, 10 and 20. Then we can ask ourselves, then why? Usually here, the system, how the system will be working, the system here, it will not only take care of the actual parameters. The values of the actual parameters will be copied to formal parameters and these two different parameters to have values in different location. So this y then here, what we'll be seeing, it is this one. Are we together? Are we together? Here you can say, okay, no, it is because we didn't we didn't pass the function onto this. So let me even just call this function. It is because we didn't pass. You can say, okay, let's, let me call it. It is x and y. The same will be printed out. 10 and 20. This is what you mean by calling by value. Usually when you call by value, the changes from here will not be changing here. But the, what we change here, it will come and change the former parameters. 
So let us just change this program of ours. Then we say, okay, I want pointer one. And secondly, uh, we need another pointer. So this is a pointer, and this is a pointer. So then here I am saying, okay, the value of my pointer one is going to be equal to, let me say, this. And the value of my pointer two is going to be equal to this. This is what we are having. When you say this star before a pointer name, it means then the value. You are going to deal with the value. If you remove it, then you are going to deal with the address. This is this is like saying like this. Okay. So then we are going, we are just coming in here. When we are going to call, we have said, okay, let me just in calling, I put here the address. And here also address. So remember that we put this one and this ones. Then we are going to call. Then we are going to say, okay, the value of this is this one and the value of this is this one. So we can see that, okay, from here usually, what will be there, it will be giving me the values from where? From former parameters. Then how and why? So it depends then. You can say, no, I want some values not to be changed. Then you will be calling your function by reference. But if you want then the actual parameters to be overwritten in your former parameters, we we'll call your function by value. This is the two difference between calling by value and calling by reference. Are we together? Okay. Calling by value and calling by reference then you can okay say okay this is now understandable calling a function by value and calling a function by reference so you can say okay now it is there's a problem then when i am having a function and my function i want it to be repeated itself then how will i do it how will I do it when the function is to be repeated itself? So you can say, okay, what is the problem? The problematic, let me say, for example, it is the Fibonacci series of numbers. The Fibonacci series of a number, when we say, for example, the Fibonacci of 4. When we, they ask you Fibonacci of 4. Fibonacci of 4 will be equal to Fibonacci of 3 plus Fibonacci of 2, sorry, 2. Then Fibonacci of 3 also will be equal to Fibonacci of 2 plus Fibonacci of 1. Fibonacci of 2 also will be equal to Fibonacci of 1 plus Fibonacci of 0. Do you understand this? So in one only Fibonacci, we can have something that repeats itself many times. Let us see how it works. Let us go to our slides in our notes. So usually this note will be attached. And here, let us go to, I think it is slide like 43. This is an example. So, for example, here, if we want Fibonacci of 3, it will be equal to Fibonacci of 2 plus Fibonacci of 1. Fibonacci of 2, it will go to Fibonacci of 1 plus Fibonacci of 0. So, then we know that the Fibonacci of 0 itself, it is 0, and the Fibonacci of 1 is 1. So, it means that Fibonacci of 2 is equal to 1 plus 0, which is 1. Fibonacci of 1, it is 1. Then here, Fibonacci of 2, we have seen that it is equal to 1. Fibonacci of 1 is equal to 1. Then 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So it means then the Fibonacci of 3 is equal to, to 2. Are you getting my point? Yes. Then here, but as you can see here, in order to find the Fibonacci of 3, we have taken the Fibonacci of 2 plus this one recursively. So we, it is very difficult to solve this 
using simple program you of, of, of grouping of repetitive statements then it means then we need to call the function itself so let me just say for example here we want long Fibonacci so let me say for example uh, let me just call let me call it for example int Fibonacci and in my int Fibonacci it will be having a number which is called long n so then in my function let me even just write a program so let me call it Fibonacci and in my Fibonacci cells of number I'm going well to have long n then in my long number what am I expecting to have here what am I expecting is to say okay if then my number is equal to 1 all my number is equal to 0 what should be there I should only return what I wish to return my number so if it is 1 it is 1 if it is 0 it is 0 wow but then else on my else statement there should be something to be done so usually I will return what then I will return this Fibonacci of series but I will just pass here what I will pass number minus one then plus what plus again Fibonacci of series of number minus two so this why then this what we have seen here like here when you say okay three will be equal three minus one is equal to two three minus two is equal to one so it means then it is in this sequence so then here we after having this so you can say okay let's have for example int let me write a long uh, number which is equal to for example this is an example then we are going to search for the Fibonacci so what should I write so here I will only call my function the Fibonacci service function then I pass what in it I will pass none so then here we can say okay let me create anything so then here I say for example long result is equal to this then I'm going to call this as my result so let me run so okay here there is a problem the value thought to be it has been ignored ignored why because let us just okay here was a problem let me even just okay use integer and even just integer, but it wasn't a problem but I want to make it very easy so then here let me put int also int so the people okay here was many oh this was a problem many specifiers so the people of percentage d is percentage d so the FIBO of num is res. Okay, let us just do this. Let me see whether it works. So here it is giving me another error. Let me ask the user, for example, to say, okay, enter your number. So let me say, for example, I'm entering, okay, let's start from the, the, the first. We have said that the Fibonacci of 1 is equal to what? Yet we still okay. Fibonacci of 1, I think it is 1, right? Wow, Fibonacci of 1 is equal to 1. Secondly, we can go, okay, what is the Fibonacci of 0? The Fibonacci of 0 is equal to 0. Fibonacci of 0 is equal to 0. We have seen that Fibonacci of 2 is equal to, to 1. So let's see, okay, Fibonacci of 2 is equal, wow. 
Fibonacci of 4 is equal to what? Fibonacci of 4 is equal to, to 3. So this is it. So what, what is a recursive function usually? A recursive function is a function that calls itself. Like you can see here, Fibonacci it is the name of the function. But inside the statements of Fibonacci, we are having the calling of the same function. So this is a very useful uh, methodology of doing some functions that can call themselves. Then here we can say, okay, then what is the difference between recursive and iterative function? Usually the repetition. Iteration, it will explicit the loop. Usually we'll be seeing it. But in recursion, it is repeated function calls. Usually it will be a repetitive function call. But if it is iterative, it means you will need to explicit, to explicit the loop. Then the termination. When you want to terminate, the recursive will terminate on base case when the best case is recognized. What is the best case? The best case of our C it is 1 or 0. But the iterative function will terminate only if the loop condition fails. So usually both of them, they can have infinite loop. But also the balance will be able to balance them. You will choose between the performance and the good software engineering will be for recursion. But then the performance, the good one is iteration. But for software, good software engineer, it is recursive. So it is the one that we can use. Okay. We can, in order to understand this, because usually in our daily lives, we've been using recursive. Then let's see another, no, no, iteration. Let's see another example of recursive. Okay, let us have another example so we can have another example. Let me say, for example, we want to search in a dictionary. And if you want to search in a dictionary, usually you will be opening randomly. And whenever you'll be reaching, then uh, whenever you'll be reaching, you will say, okay, am I in the correct place? If no, you will not go to all the sites, so you can prefer to go forward or to go backward according to the letter that you are reaching at. For example, let me say you want to search for number from the dictionary and when you open the dictionary then you open where it is called mum ring or mum or even just something that starts with M. So then it means you will not go before M. So you will also just forget about the other before M. Then you open back nearby M. So when you open, then for example, you go to P. So it means you cannot continue to go forward. You need to go in those specific papers. The same then here. Let me say, for example, that we're having 12, 13. And then the same way we are having this. This is an example. These are the examples that we can have in these things. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me, for example, even just say we have 15. And we are having like these numbers. So as you can see, these numbers are ordered. So for example, if the, we are going to search, for example, for 33, and we open randomly, we go to 27. So it means we will forget about this. And we get focused on the next number from this. So how will this be done? You will just create an index. Usually this is index 0, 1, 2. And we continue the same, the same way. So then here, what will you be doing? You say, okay. Let me create my law. And also, law will be assigned to the first index of your array. Then high will be assigned to the last element in your array. So then you can say, okay, let me just take my, let me just take my middle. So you can say, okay, 
let me search for the middle usually my middle can be equal to my low then I will just take my high minus I can say okay high minus one or even just yes, another not to even let me see if it is okay low plus high if all divide by two so it means that we take all then I divide by two this is an example so it means then here my low is equal to zero my high is equal to 12 so it means then my middle will be where here so if for example we are searching for 33 and we can say okay if my middle is equal to the search then what should be there i should only return what i can come here and return middle because it's where i am so it means i am returning where i am so then as long as then this is greater so it means then what should i do I will only just say okay as long as this part all will be deleted will be in red so will be deleted not in red but let me even just put it in red so that we can even just understand it much so then here what will I do I will only just take this law I assign it to here then here I will again search for the middle so 7 plus 12 which is equal to 19 divided by 2 it will be equal to 8 so then I will just come here 8 or 9 sorry then my middle will come in here the same practice as I did here then here you can see I'm searching for 33 but my middle is 39 so it means also this part will be deleted so I would remain with this one and I continue in the same way so this is also another way of using recursive function so let me say that for example we are going to write a program to do it so let me go here then i'm going to call it because it is what we call binary search procedure then here what should i do let me just have first of all my preprocessor i'm going to include my studio dot h after including this then let me have my main then my main is okay return nothing other than zero so okay for example this then here let me just go through the function so let me say okay i have a function which is called binary search recursion it is my function but then in my function there's some parameters we have said that the parameters those are the values that, that those are the elements that you want to use in the execution of your function so let me say that for example in my thing i will need something like an array as you can see here i will need this array secondly i will need a variable called low and i will also need a high and also I will need something to search which is search for example here I can say okay need something to search which is search why not middle because middle is only found by taking a low plus high divided by two so this is the one I uh, will need okay another int which is means int low I will also have another one which is int high and int search let me call it searched because search it is a keyword then it is not good to use it so then here I will say okay this function of mine will be done when only high is greater than or equal low so it means if it is like this then i am still in the range so when i will be coming for example and then i see my high is here and my low is here so it means it, this is not possible 
so it means then it will be an indefinite rope so yeah then okay let me say okay int let me say for example into my law the one that i have called so here i cannot define the one that has been defined here so i want to see it or define middle and my middle will be equal to my law so i can say okay law plus but this high you can say okay if high for example in my main i can say okay for example let me say that high we can say okay int array 10 and then when we say high is equal to size of array so you can understand it will be having 10 but my indexing will be going up to what up to size minus 1 so this way here I can say okay low plus i minus one then whatever i am saying then i divide by two this is to find middle i am now finding my middle then i can come up here i say wow then if my array dot middle is equal to the search not search but this one which is searched what should i do here nothing else other than returning what other than returning mid middle so let me then just call this so that it will not be a very big thing so we only return what we only return mid so then here we can say okay now it's okay because i have found it then we need to have another if because there's a way sometimes it can even just sometimes it will uh, most of the time it will not be uh, at that specific middle index so for example here we were searching for 33 but the middle was 30 so it means then what is bigger than another one so here we can say okay if if then array dot middle is less than so if array dot mid if array dot mid is less than like here is less than searched sorry is less than searched what do I need to do? I will only return I will return what? I will return my function binary search I will go and search the same but then here I will pass the array after passing the array then I also need to pass the law after the law I need to pass also the high after the high then I need to pass also the searched. But here you can understand that I am not changing anything. Just cause here it was like here, if it is 30, what I have said, I need to take my low weight was then it becomes here. Usually, what is this place? This place is middle plus one. So it means the way I have wrote low, I will write what? I will write middle plus one wow excellent very good so then we can have the same thing like here i'm sorry so then if then meter is greater so then if it is greater then it means for example we are searching for 24 yet the middle was 30 we need to take this high then it becomes here so it means then where I have wrote high, I will go to and write middle minus one. So then here I will just come here. Middle is still uh, okay on low because here it was low. 
where it I had got to high, and we just write what middle minus one. So it means then I have finished. Then here I will be having my else, and my else will be the return, which is minus one. When it doesn't work, we need also to return this minus one. But this minus one will be returned where after my if is when I will be returning my minus one. So minus one, it means what I am searching for, it is not found. So we can also just write our for our main. So here, usually this is not, this is not possible. It was for the test because I cannot write the statement behind the return. So this statement will not be seen. So let me say, for example, what, okay, let me just write, okay, int my array, and let me just pass my array some elements, then my elements, let them be, for example, the other elements that we had, and I'm going to only just take these elements, then I go to notepad to see whether this element can be seen, or they can be seen, notepad, then here, for example, K. So let me say that, for example, I want these numbers. Then these are the numbers that I want to pass to my function, not sorry, to my array. And I put a semicolon to show the end. Then as you can see that, okay, I will have, okay, my int n, which is equal to, My size of array then for example okay when I say okay int x for example I will just ask to the user enter the number to be searched Then here there will be a scanner. Then in my scan let me say for example that I want I received something which is for example empty number. So after having this, let me just okay, let us say this. So then I am going to call then my function. What is the name of my function? It is this one, but what should I pass? I wish first of all pass the array, which is the name of the array. Secondly, what should I pass? I will pass the low element, it is zero. So what is the high element? Usually the high element, it is this one n which is uh, yes n but also i can say okay n minus one because i don't need to go back then here the search what is the search element the search element is number so i have finished then but then here i can say okay as long as this one then i will have something which is into result then my can say okay my int result is equal to binary search so then we are going to control our result let me control my result so i can say okay result then if my result is equal to minus one 
then what should I do? We print if and we tell to the user element not found. Then here, secondly, I can also just okay. I can also print out. Okay, I tell to the user element is present at yeah, let me say index this one I will just tell to the user at which index is found then I just include the result then here we have finished this is what you mean by operators so let me say for example i am going to search for example 33 so usually here uh, okay it is giving me an error let me say that for example we are going to run so okay let me put for example 23 it is not present so let us just add 23 in our array and we'll say okay 23 and I'm going to run then I'm going to add 23 so uh, 23 usually okay let me say full it's present at index 2 let me say 10 Present at index four zero one two three four. So we can see that also these numbers of ours can be able to be same. So here then you can change this to any way of controlling that you want, but this is the easiest way uh, without using if 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 because here we can also just uh, control our things on only one level so okay let me say for example we are going to have like this in our array and here we are saying okay my interior is this one my size okay is this one let me say for example I'm going to okay 23 so is not present in my array yes but let me for example 24 to see whether 24 will be seen so 24 is present at index 4 so usually this is how then it is being done the recap of what we have done we have created our binary search procedure function and we passed the array the low element the high element and the search key then here we have said okay it will only do this when the low element uh, is still less than the high element and then what we have seen is that then uh, if then it is equal then I will return mid if this one I will return this and uh, also uh, my else it will return this so <coughs> this is when this is like saying if array is less than x I will return this but because it is the last option then I need to return this then the last of last it will return minus one then in my void I've created an array and so together with the search key so also then here I have said okay print if enter the number to be searched then I received it so I said okay then the result will be getting the number that has been searched so it depends it can return that number but it will be returning the indexes then I will tell to the user where this index has been returned so this is not all for the function but then we can also just say that okay these are the main things that we need to understand on functions these are the main things that we need to, to know about functions then a yeah, function is as we have said is a set of reusable and independent named of named set of codes that perform a specific task it is an independent a named a reusable set of codes to perform a specific tasks then you can use those functions in order to make your application or your program portable 
in order to make your program also uh, very easy to be and clear to be understood by any other programmer and also in order to avoid the redundant programming and also it will be very very clear and also it will be helping you to build customize the library so thank you so much i wish to see your comments if you have any comment or any problem you can even just leave it and um, over there and the comment section always even just contact me directly thank you and have a great day